do another deep dive on something else that sounded interesting. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, maybe that one's not quite for me. And I started learning about real estate. It's about getting into people's hearts and minds and, and helping them through whatever it is they're going. If you're not happy with the job that you have, there is one out there that, that is better fitted for you. And I, I would encourage anybody who's having that burnout that, you know, hey, sometimes a change in scenery can do you all the good in the world. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, hey everyone, welcome to the Life by Design podcast. Today, we are really excited to have Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones just sounds like a Hollywood star here. He is a CRNA going from that, quitting that job, finding his passion in real estate. And now what he gets to do is not only do what he loves to do, but also have phenomenal time with his family and raising three wonderful children. I'd like to introduce you to Bobby Jones on how he has designed his life. Without further ado, Bobby Jones. All right, Bobby, thank you for being on the show. Tell me and our viewers a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Give us an intro. Well, uh, you know, first off, Alex, thanks for having me. This is uh, a real treat to be on your show, uh, and especially, uh, you know, after you were so kind to, to be on mine as well. So, um, you know, thank you for having me. And, uh, but yeah, a little bit about me. I, uh, I am one of those people that um, I didn't know where. I wanted to go with my life. I, I honestly didn't. Um, you know, I, I was in high school and, you know, my dad gave me three options. He said, you can be an engineer, a lawyer, or a doctor. And so I went to college at University of Florida. I was excited. I was going to, you know, try out being an engineer. No one told me that I didn't have an engineering bone in my body. <laughs> um, you know, so, so that lasted about a semester. And, uh, and then I decided to go pre-med. And, um, you know, I was very, at the time, I was very rigid in my thinking. And so, you know, I had no idea of the plethora of different healthcare uh, jobs and options out there, you know. Right. So um, I took a physics course that was, an, it was a weed out course for pre-med students. I made three straight 48s on exams. And I said, okay, maybe this route isn't going to work for me. And so I just, after that, I went straight towards a business degree. And um, the, the world of business made sense to me. Right. Economics and, and uh, you know, just, just all of that world, the marketing and advertising, it all made a lot of sense to me. So I actually ended up graduating, graduating with a business degree first. And then uh, after I graduated, I took an EMT course because I thought about going into the family tradition of firefighting. And, okay. uh, and if I had a degree, uh, you know, and, and I did fire training, I could kind of write my own ticket at that time. And so I took an EMT course, discovered I didn't really like riding on the ambulance, but I did enjoy being in the hospital setting. And there was a, kind of an older, uh, you know, salty dog nurse in the uh, emergency department at Tampa General here. And he told me, you ought to become a nurse anesthetist. Hmm. You know, that's if I had it to do all over again, that's what I'd do. And, of course, I said, a nurse a what's a tist? And he, he, I had no idea. I'd never heard of this. And right. so I did my research. And, you know, I already knew that I was kind of leaning towards doing something in the hospital setting anyway. And this seemed perfect. Um, so that's when I decided to go all out on pursuing my, you know, a career as a nurse anesthetist. And so, you know, I, I went to an accelerated program for nursing. I, you know, got into an ICU and, and worked three years in, in, in the ICU. Then I, you know, after that, I went to school for anesthesia and I came out at the age of 31 and I'm like, okay, I got this new career. I'm making more money than I ever thought I could make. Um, you know, and, and I'm enjoying life. I've, I've got a wife and, and a, you know, a young daughter. And lo and behold, like, we weren't happy. We, mm. that, wasn't, that wasn't enough for us to be happy as a couple and as a family. And, and so went Did your through, wife work at the um, time or was it just you working? Yeah. No, she's working. She was working. And she's an occupational therapist. And, okay. uh, and so that was, 
that was a tough period. We were trying to figure things out, and we, we're still trying to figure things out to this day. Uh, it's 10 years later, we're still trying to figure things out. But, you know, to, to that point, um, I thought that financial security was going to be it. And that's, once we had that, that everything else would just kind of fall into place. Mm. But I had neglected a lot of other things along the way, along my pursuit of uh, my new career. And so, you know, over the years, uh, we, we had a couple more kids. We, we've got three kids now. Um, but I got to a certain point where I started to get burnt out with my, my anesthesia career. And, um, you know, that was something that, uh, you know, I, I, I started to go 1099 and I worked – you know, outside of the hospital setting and in, in like outpatient clinics, I, I did some GI work. I did, uh, I worked at an eye center for about a year and a half. And, uh, you know, during those times, you know, I, I, I had some feast or famine moments. And that's really when I started researching, uh, what else can I do? What, what else can I do to produce money on the side? Because I would have these periods of time where, you know, like, okay, well, I'm only working three to five days a month. I really enjoy my free time mm -hmm. and and we're doing okay. I don't have to, you know, bust my hump 40 hours a week to make a living. We're doing okay with me just working a few days a month. So how can I replace those days with different types of income? And that's when I really started to, to look for things outside of my own career. So um, went to podcast university, learned all kinds of things. I, I went after, um, you know, a, I, I would do deep dives into a lot of different side hustles and get to a certain point and then it's like, okay, well maybe that one's not quite for me. And then, you know, I'd, I'd do another deep dive on something else that sounded interesting. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, maybe that one's not quite for me. And I started learning about real estate, started listening to bigger pockets. Um, that was something that was a key in, in my development, uh, pulling me back towards, you know, real estate in, in some form or fashion. And I heard uh, Michael Blanc, on the Bigger Pockets uh, program, uh, and he was talking all about apartment investing, and so that's where I, I said, "Oh man, this is something that's that's interesting to me. Um, that sounds really cool." And so I started listening to his podcast, and then he had on a guy named Ryan McKenna of McKenna mm -hmm. Capital, and and Ryan McKenna helps to capital raise for these deals, and and you know that's kind of how he is able to to be a part of the general partnerships on these deals is by providing that that you know that large sum of capital and that got me to thinking i'm like okay well so i can passively invest and produce passive income right this is exactly what i'm looking for this is this yeah. is it and so um i decided to give it a go and uh and i i mean i kind of i burn the boats, if you will. Uh, you know, I, I took money out of my retirement accounts. I paid the penalties and I put them into apartment investments and, um, they started producing passive income that allowed me to walk away from my career. And, and the timing was, was really great because, you know, I actually needed to transition into being a stay at home dad at the time. Um, mm. this was in August of 2019 and we had an issue with, our daycare for our youngest daughter. And, uh, and so we were unable to find a place in a very short period of time and I needed to be able to stay home and investments in real estate allow me to do that. And, uh, and then of course, when COVID hit in early 2020, all three of the kids were back home and my wife was still working full time. And I was able to still be there for the kids, make sure they were doing everything that they needed to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, it really was something that worked out well for us as a family to be able to have this option uh, of me walking away from, from my career and, and being able to be there for my family more. It was like good timing, right? Like a blessing in disguise. Yeah, yeah sometimes you get lucky, man. I, you know, and, and, and I certainly was with that. Yeah, now, you know, um, overall, Bobby, I talk to a lot of healthcare professionals who were burned out and are burned out, just like you were. What is it about, you know, you were working three to five days per week. What was it, you know, you said money, the finances were great. And a lot of people believe, 
hey, when the finances are right, everything will come into play, right? Everything will, will work mm-hmm. itself out. What was it you felt like that you had to give up, you know, trying to working towards being a nurse? Or what were you not happy about, you and your wife? Well, I think it was a, some of it was scheduling. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I when I first started out, I was on a particular schedule that gave me chunks of time off without having mm-hmm. to ask for PTO. So mm-hmm. I could ask for a single day off and I'd get seven in a row. Or I could ask for a single day off and I'd get six days in a row. And that was nice. But the problem was that it was not conducive to uh, me being there for my family. And so I had eventually transitioned to a five days a week kind of schedule. And for me, I, I just don't think that was enough time for me. That was not, mm-hmm. it, it was really impeding on, um, the time I needed to kind of rest and recharge and get ready, uh, to go back to work. So, um, it was just one of those things. I mean, you know, the, Healthcare, there is a lot of little traumas that happen within the healthcare setting that we don't always do a great job of addressing. Uh, it's it's getting better, but um, you know, just just certain events. You know, anytime there's a code event, or you know, uh, okay, so I just coded a patient, you know, for for twenty minutes. But okay, after after I did that, well, okay, in ten minutes I got to be starting another case. Mm-hmm. Whoa, you know, like I literally just was trying to save somebody's life, and now right. I got to go back into a, a, another case and act like nothing's happened. You right. know, so so there's a lot of of that kind of stuff that can can happen. Um, you know, that builds up over time. And, mm. and if we're not processing it properly, which I was not, I, I, I was not addressing that uh, outside of my, you know, outside of the hospital system, I wasn't addressing that. And it certainly wasn't being addressed by the hospital or, or any of the, you know, the folks that I work with or anything like that. Uh, none of the management, that kind of stuff just didn't happen then. Um, you know, so you learn to kind of bury it and mm. that's not healthy over time it's it's just right. not and some people can handle that some people can handle that and they do perfectly fine with it um i was just not one of those people you know um you know and and, and thinking back on it now too i've always had kind of an entrepreneurial mindset yeah. and I did not find good ways to, to uh, explore that entrepreneurial mindset mm. while being a CRNA. Now, the funny thing is that now, after I've stopped practicing and, and, and after I started reaching out to people to try to help them, you know, find what works for them, you know, and, and you know, with my podcast, the Plan B CRNA podcast, it's all about figuring out what your plan B is. So... You know, and, and, and my, my business on call capital is about helping people to invest in alternative investments like multifamily. So I, I found this passion for trying to help people figure themselves out. And in doing so, I really have expanded my mind to what you can do uh, while still using your career. You don't have to walk away from your career. You don't have to lose your career um, in order to, you know, kind of scratch that entrepreneurial itch. There's so many providers who are doing things outside of the traditional, I'm working in the hospital setting and I'm, you know, there for, you know, surgeries for eight or 10 hours a day. And, and then I go home, you know, there, there's a lot more to healthcare than that. Now, um, you know, you've got ketamine clinics and IV therapy and, you know, just these, there are people who are innovating and, and inventing, um, all kinds of different things uh, for the healthcare setting. So people are out there doing the things that, you know, in hindsight, hey, yeah, maybe I maybe I could have gone that route too and, and scratched that itch, but but I just took a different path. Yeah. Would you ever consider going back to doing something entrepreneurial in the nursing world? Or are you thinking, hey, I'm going to stick in my lane with the real estate from now on? Well, I, 
you know, I'm, I'm certainly not just sticking with real estate. Um, okay. You know, but um, one of the things that I've been leaning into, and and I have not done this yet, so perhaps putting it out here in the ether will, you know, uh, provide some level of accountability. But it's my intention. I, you know, I want to help other people with their own um, emotional journeys, you know, and so in in doing so, I've been trying to, you know, do journaling and I discovered stoicism, um, which had a big effect on me. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I'm I'm working on doing meditation. And so what I want to be able to do is bring uh, meditation to to men and healthcare providers in particular, you know, um, because it's something where a lot of this stuff is geared towards women and men, a lot of men are struggling right now. Um, it's, it's well documented that, you know, uh, men don't have, you know, many close friends and they, you know, they, they feel alone. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's unsettling. And right. it's a lot of the same emotions that I have felt, uh, mm. myself, uh, in, in my own journey through adulthood. So, I want to be able to help out in, in different ways. And so and, and I guess you could say, yes, this is nursing from a holistic standpoint. Uh, yes, this is healthcare from a, a more holistic standpoint. It's not just, you know, uh, Western medicine uh, and, and, and separating everything into its own little specialty and looking at you as if you're just, you know, a bunch of pieces of a whole. Um, you know, it's, it's about getting into people's hearts and minds and, and helping them through whatever it is they're going through. So I, I have every intention of starting a, uh, a meditation podcast for men um, and, you know, helping, helping men through their journey um, in this life because that's something I'm passionate about. I, you know, I have a son uh, myself and, and, of course, two daughters. Uh, that's something, you know, growing up as a, a, a young boy in this society – it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because how do I teach my son how to be a man? You mm-hmm. know, um, I, I grew up and, and, you know, my dad was taking me to Hooters and there was objectification of women, you know, the, okay. The world's not exactly like that right now. Uh, right. You, you, you know, and so I don't want to raise my son that same way, not to say, you know, that, that my dad wasn't doing the best that he could, but you know, I have to raise my son to to participate in a different type of world. Yeah. So how do I do that? Um, you know, how do I empower him as well as empowering my daughters? Because right now there's a lot of women's empowerment. I need to be able to empower my son as well uh, to feel confident right. about his place in this world. So that's, you know, a part of why I'm, I'm pretty passionate about some of this stuff. Yeah. And you mentioned the word stoic. And mm-hmm. I, it was a couple months ago, I ended up listening to the book, um, How to Think Like a Roman Emperor. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was the, uh, the, stoic, the stoic philosophy of Market Aurelius. And yeah. that was really yeah. interesting. You yeah, and, and a lot of people think of the word stoic, and that means hiding your emotions or, or mm-hmm. you know, things like that. And it's... Uh, that is not what this is referring to. Stoicism is a uh, a philosophy for living that was developed by um, you know ancient Romans like Marcus Aurelius, um, like Epictetus and, and Seneca, and you know back then the difference between philosophy and religion was very stark. You know, religion back mm-hmm. then was a lot about ritual, and you know, hey, we need it to rain, so we're going to sacrifice a goat. Okay, that was kind of you know the the type of religion that happened back then. So it it did not have this mix with your moral compass like mm. it does today. So people needed a philosophy for living, and Stoicism was one of those philosophies. And and the idea in general is that hey, you know this world's happening around you. You can control what you can control, and you got to learn how to let the other stuff go. Right. Uh, and that's a very broad generalization. Um, there are many, many different interpretations of Stoicism. Some people get way into the weeds with it. My concern when looking at Stoicism is how does it help me? Mm-hmm. And, and how does it help me handle 
the emotions that I'm going through in my life, the different problems that I have in my life, the day-to-day things that I see going on. How does it help me to, to better handle those things? And so it, it really is about um, being in the moment, enjoying every moment as it is, uh, embracing the idea that, hey, you know what, someday you're going to die. And right. so, you know, that's, it is inevitable. Nobody has, has beaten that yet, you know? So the right. idea is that, okay, well, how do you deal with that? Then you live every day to the fullest that you can. You, you, know. you try to enjoy every day um, and, and you try to get the most out of every day. And you try to help people and, and be a good human being uh, with this limited time that you do have on earth. So, and, and that's really what, what stoicism is about for me. Yeah, I, when I was reading the the book, what I looked at and saw was a lot of examples of pure leadership and how he was able to lead others, not only as a society, right, but mm-hmm, also mm-hmm. his family and the people around him as well. Yeah. So absolutely, now, he was he was humble, and that's the th- mm-hmm. like he used it as a practice. He was practicing stoicism. It wasn't something that was just told to him and he, he listened. He he went through rituals every day to remind himself that, hey, you know what? I'm yeah, I'm emperor. I'm not some hot shot here. You know, like I, I could be taken off this throne anytime. Mm. I didn't do anything special to deserve this over anybody else, you know. I have to continue to do things the right way. And um, you know, so so that yeah, he he was one of the ones who uh, obviously, there's there's the most written about him probably uh, in, right. in Stoic history. Now, with you, Bobby, I'm talking about work, how do you mm-hmm. balance work and family now? You know, with uh, your your new newfound schedule. <laughs> yeah, the newfound. How do you control schedule? that? Well, so um, to, the funny thing about me being more of an entrepreneur is that I'm really not great at self scheduling. <laughs> so, mm. uh, you know, it's and, and especially in today's world, distractions are everywhere. You know, you, you yes. get your, your notifications on your phone, you you start scrolling on Facebook or something and, and Instagram or whatever. And uh, you start watching some reels. It, there is so much that can suck away your time. So uh, to me, it's important to kind of have a schedule of what your day looks like. So, um, you know, for instance, it's something where, like with with my family, um, you know, you, you get up, you get the kids ready for school, you get them off to school, and then my day kind of begins. You know, where, where I'm I'm working on my podcast and I'm working on you know going to different real estate meetups and things like that. Um, you know, via Zoom or, or you know in person if if that works out. So, and then, you know, I I get those things done you know, whatever I can during the day. And then I pick up my kids from school and then it's family time from then until they go to bed. Mm. And so that's generally how my, my day works. I have my own time to do what I want to. If I want to go, you know, meet my wife uh, for lunch that day, I can go meet her for lunch. You know, I can't do it every day. Um, but it's something where like, Hey, we can plan on a Tuesday to, Hey, we're going to go grab some lunch and, and have a lunch date. So there's there are a lot of advantages to it uh, that I found because there is a, a, there is a lot of flexibility that you can have. Um, but, you know, there, there's a reason why certain restaurants only have so many options on their menu. And it's because it can be overwhelming. Uh, and, and, and it can kind of create some of that analysis paralysis. And so I have found that I like to have options, but if I give myself too many, then I, I can start to get in trouble there. So, trying to stay, uh, you know, as focused on a time schedule as I can, um, while also, you know, providing time for for some fun as well. That's great. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? To be able to yeah, do yeah. both. Tell me more about your podcast and how how do you use the podcast to inspire other healthcare professionals to have a plan B? Yeah, sure. Well, um, you know, I started this podcast because it was something that when I was going through my anesthesia training, 
uh, I would go to conferences and and I would meet other people and or just be in the in the operating rooms or on some Facebook groups and things. And there was this movement towards you know these people who were trying to create their quote unquote plan B. And of course, at the time, I'm training hard to become an anesthesia professional, and mm-hmm. I'm like, what in the world do you need a plan B for? Like this is what you're trained for. You can you know. Like, if you want more money, then just go work an extra day, you know, right. like, and you can make good money just working an extra day a month or, right, or right, an right. extra couple days a month. It's not, but, but what I would learn is that having a plan B is not just about financial reward. Um, it's, it's a way to explore different sides of yourself and, and a way to find something that's outside of that traditional career because as a lot of people found out during COVID, your career as it is right now can change in an instant. Mm. You know, you, you may have to back off of your job for, for four weeks or six weeks if there's another pandemic. And and the interesting thing was that there were a lot of folks who they make great money, but you take their work away from them for six weeks and all of a sudden they are panicked because right. they had that lifestyle creep, you know, and and they were not necessarily well prepared for that rainy day. So I started this podcast because I wanted people to see what other people were doing, um, to, to be able to explore their options so that they could have, you know, th- they could start to create different options for their own lifestyle design. Um, you know, hey, you may not want to give up your career like I did. Mm-hmm. And that's that's actually a lot more normal <laughs> than what I did. Uh, <laughs> you know, but but what you may want to do is say, okay, well, I'm working five days a week now. Man, yeah. this would be really great if I could go down to three days a week. Okay. So you find something on the side that produces that income to, to make up for a couple of days. And all of a sudden, you have the option to go down to three days a week. And you enjoy your career more. You know, uh, you enjoy your life more and that lifestyle that that you've now created. So for me, it's about creating those options for yourself. Um, mm. And everybody's a little bit different. So, you know, when I started the podcast, what I wanted to do was I wanted to interview people who were doing things on the side. That was that was my, my uh, provider spotlight episodes are, are those episodes that come out every Monday. And then I wanted to actually use a lot of the research that I've already done and, and kind of give back to people, um, you know, with that. So on Thursdays, I alternate between uh, what I call rabbit hole episodes where I, I do it like a deep dive into a particular side hustle. Um, so, you know, I've, I've done anything from audiobook narration to, you know, options trading to you know, I mean, there's there's just so much out there. I did a, a four part series on cryptocurrency uh, wow. last summer. You know, there, there's so many different options to you know to look at out there, um, and a lot of great ones too. Um, so I, I do those episodes uh, every other Thursday, and then the alternating Thursdays I do um, what I call thoughtful Thursdays, and those are my mindset episodes. I call those you know like my mini therapy sessions because I'll take a quote. And I'll kind of riff on what that quote means to me, um, you know, and, and, and how I see it uh, from from a more mindset perspective. Um, you know, how, how does that affect your mindset? So, um, but just, you know, that that's the podcast in a nutshell. So it's two episodes a week and uh, Mondays and Thursdays when it comes out. And, uh, you know, I've enjoyed it. I, I've been doing it for about two years now, uh, two years this month. And, um, you know, that's so I awesome. got a, Congratulations. A, a big, Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's it's been a fun adventure, and and uh, you know I've gotten a lot of you know positive feedback about it. So and, and I've gotten to meet, like I said, some really great people. And um, you know I wouldn't have done this podcast while I was still working. It's, right. That's the funny part is like I'm doing this now to help this community that I was a part of and that I'm still a part of. And you know, but. Would I have thought to do this while I was still a practicing CRNA? I, I don't know, um, but it's it's come to life afterwards, 
and uh, and so that's that's the fun of it is is I still get to be connected to that community and and just meet super smart super cool people that are doing amazing things. That's awesome. No, there's no doubt. I've listened to your podcast and they definitely provide a lot of value. So thank you for doing them. Number one and yeah, number two. You. Yeah. What what are you what are you thinking about in like one to three years? What are your ultimate goals around your life, the family, podcasts? You know, do you want to yeah. just travel the world and do podcasts? Or, or what, what's <laughs> hey hey here I am yeah, in uh, Portugal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. I when you when you start to think about that one to three year time frame. Obviously, I have certain goals for my business uh, on Call Capital. That I'd I'd like to hit in the next one to three years, um, yeah. And and those are you know kind of financially based and you know. But you know I think the main thing is that like for my podcast I really want to increase the audience of the podcast because every person that that I hear from they discover the show and and they're just amazed at how much is actually out there. Um. And, and what the many options are. I mean, you know, it, it's it's something that when when I hear that for the first time, you know, from somebody, it really kind of gets you pumped up. You want to keep doing what you're doing. So, you know, for the podcast, I just I want to increase the listenership um, because I know that it's not reaching nearly the amount of people that that I think could benefit from it. So and right. it's not just for CRNAs. I, I have other folks on there. I, you know, I have pharmacists and, and advanced practice nurses and, you know, obviously you were on there. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's not a show that's just for CRNAs. It is for any healthcare professional who's looking for something to do on the side. That's great. I wonder so, I mean, what, I would, what yeah. I like to do is I would like to kind of blast your podcast on my mm-hmm. feed as well to get yeah. some people to really get on there. So for sure, man, for sure. And, and you know, Hey, in three years, I mean, I, I don't think I'm going to be sipping my ties on a beach, you know, in the, in the Caribbean or anything, but uh, you know, for me, it's, it's just making sure that I'm still able to have that quality time with my kids. You know, that's, that's the, the hard part about being an entrepreneur is, you know, I, I didn't get into this stuff to replace one job with another. You know, I got into this because I'm passionate about it, but I also am passionate about my family and and spending quality time with them. And so that's what I really want to make sure of is that I don't get too big for my britches, you know, and and, you know, uh, I'm not I'm not trying to be the head of a major corporation, Uh, you know, (laughs) for uh, an old Austin Powers quote. Sorry, uh, just indulge me there. But, uh, you know, it's just. You know, one of those things where I, I want to keep this uh, to a manageable size, so that I can I can continue to love what I'm doing, and uh, and continue to to keep that passion uh, going for providing people with this service. Oh, absolutely! Now I just thought of a question: Say mm-hmm. if someone was in your own shoes mm-hmm. when you were working full time as a CRNA, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What would you tell them to, or, or how would you, how would they even decide whether or not to completely quit CRNA yeah. versus doing mainly CRNA, back off a little bit, and mm-hmm. then starting real estate part time? Yeah, so I've met a lot of CRNAs who who are doing real estate on the side. Um, mm-hmm. You know, whether it's fix and flips or multifamily, um, you know, I've met a lot of those folks who are still practicing. And, and the benefit of that is the networking that you get from being, mm. you know, still in these healthcare settings around, you know, uh, physicians and, and nurses and, and these people, uh, you can talk about what it is you're doing on the side uh, with them. And, and there's a lot of benefit to that kind of networking that you can do. Um, if you're not happy with the job that you have, there is one out there that that is better fitted for you. Um, that's and that's the truth of it. The thing is, are you able and willing to move for it, to to go somewhere else, to change your life as it is? You know, that was my thing. Was I? You know, I wasn't really ready to uproot my family, and. And I just didn't like some of the options that were around me, so I decided to walk away. 
Uh, could I have found something across the country? Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind that I could have found something different um, that, that would have suited me. But I did not want to uproot my family, and that was a choice that I made. Um, you know, of course, I came from a military family, and we moved a little bit. Uh, you know, and, and my wife, you know, came from a family where her, her dad was an engineer and, and he was a VP of a company and he, she was moving every three years, uh, mm. every three or four years. So for us, it was important for our kids to have roots. Um, mm. you know, we, we liked the idea of them having roots where we were and, um, you know, so, so it, it's something that it's a personal decision, but you know, what I would suggest is that, hey, you know, maybe you take a sabbatical. You know, if, if you got enough money saved up, take a three-month sabbatical and, and figure it out, what you want to do next. Um, you know, if, if you're that, you know, if, if you're burnt out and, and you need a change, you can always just step away for a little bit and recharge, you know. Because um, sometimes that can, that can really help provide a lot of clarity. Um, you may find that after a month, you're going nuts because you need something to do, you know? Um, right. and, and that I'll find that after like impetus. a week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you may find that to be the impetus for real change in your life. You know, okay, well I know I need to stay busy, but what is it that I'm passionate about staying busy about? Yeah. You know? Um, so, you know, I, I would encourage people to, you know, Hey, keep, keep hold of that license and, and, uh, you know, just, uh, always plan for the worst, you know. Um, but you know there are some people, and I've I've spoken with them, and it's like they they feel trapped because mm -hmm. they, this is the only thing they feel like they can do. And right. you know they come into work and they're not particularly happy. They're just trying to work until their kids are out of college, you know, or, or whatever you know stepping stone they need to get to. Uh, and and that's the reason they're there is to go and and kind of you know. They, obviously, they still want to take care of people, but they're they're collecting a paycheck, and you know I think that's unfortunate because this is a caring industry, and you know healthcare in general has turned into a you know obviously it's big business, and you know there's there's a certain amount of detachment when you start talking about uh, business decisions versus healthcare decisions, and so I, I feel like you know, what we've seen is the pendulum has swung too much in, in the direction of business in healthcare and, and not enough towards, you know, the care in healthcare. Um, right. So eventually it's going to swing back. That's the way these things tend to work. Um, or at least I, I can remain hopeful for it. But same uh, here, but yeah. same here. I mean, I, I talked to a lot of uh, doctors and other healthcare professionals where when I asked them, I said, you know, now that you've thought about doing something else, why did you think about it to begin with? You know, mm -hmm. what's keeping you? What's keeping you there? Yeah. And a lot of them will say, yeah. "Well, I still got my house; I got to pay off," or "I want to just ride it out until my get my kids go to college and they don't have to mm -hmm. move back home anymore." Um, yeah. And it's 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 not so much they they went into it loving it, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. over time they've had to. Like things change, whether it's the, yeah, the, the yeah. financial side that they saw and and now they don't feel like they care enough about it as they used to. Yeah. So we see that a lot as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see it, you know, when, when you're getting equipment or whatever. I mean, you know, it the hospitals make this decision and now so all of a sudden you've got this different IV set up that you've got to use that is flimsy and, you know, doesn't work really well. But you know what? Hey, it was cheaper. And so that's why we went with it, and right. uh, and and now you're forced to work with it as a healthcare professional. So, you know, like we all want the tools to do the best job that we can, and uh, and, and we all want to feel supported. And unfortunately, there are a lot of, of places out there that are not supportive uh, mm -hmm. in in how they treat their providers. But like I said before, there are plenty of them out there that are supportive, that that are the right place for people to to find a position. Uh, and, and find a place. So, you know, like I said, I, I would encourage anybody who's having that burnout that, you know, hey, sometimes a change in scenery can do you all the good in the world. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, you know, try to try to find that for yourself uh, in whatever capacity you can. That's awesome. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for sharing everything that you have today. Lots of info. Yeah. We took a deep dive on it. 
in the event where other healthcare professionals, people in real estate want to reach out to you, what's the best way? Drop some of your information on here and I'll make sure to include it in the comments and the descriptions. Sure, sure. Well, um, you know, my email is bobby at oncallinvestments.com. And, um, you know, of course, you can go to www.oncallinvestments.com to uh, check out a little bit more about me. Uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, you know, and, and Instagram uh, at On Call Capital. Um, and, and, you know, I'm on YouTube. I have a YouTube page where I post all, videos of all of my podcasts and I do have some educational materials there, too. So um, that's, you know, On Call Capital for you, the, the number four and the letter U. Um, so yeah, and we'll have all that in the show notes and, you know, probably a little more. I don't know. There's all kinds of ways to get a hold of me, man. Uh, you want my number? My number is 336-403-2256. Uh, you, you can give me a call or text anytime and, uh, I'm happy to talk to people. I, I love helping people out and, um, you know, having great conversations just like this one. Perfect. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, Alex, I, I appreciate the time today, man. I, I really, uh, you know, I think what you're doing is great. Uh, lifestyle design, man. That's what it's all about. That's it. Now you get to go have fun with the kids. That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Cool, bud. All right. We'll see you next time, Bobby. All right. Take care, bud. If you love watching Bobby Jones, you might love watching other people just like him who have gone from one position in their career into real estate or finding their plan B. Click here and click here to watch more. We'll see you next time.